Hi friends, host Eric here with another car video and I'm going to try to speak loudly because I've gotten a couple of comments saying the audio on these car videos isn't great. So I had a great conversation or interesting conversation with Washington uh, who came in and argued the liberal side of things basically. Uh, the tax and spend side of things and it was frustrating because there's a real failure I think in general and people to understand the limits of human ideation and that's what the topic of this video is really about when we look at history which Washington kept invoking we need to remember that we're seeing a the, the playing out of a battle between good and evil is the only way to put it. And good is that which promotes a free and civil society. Evil is that which is authoritarian and, and detracts from or undermines or otherwise harms a free and civil society. For those of us who were born in America or Scandinavia or some nice place like that, we take for granted a lot of the liberties we enjoy. Washington's political activism is his right, for sure, as is his speech. And if we let him win those arguments, he won't have that right anymore. Because that's what utilitarianism ultimately leads to. It means that the people who make the best arguments in favor of impacts, the most impacts that can be predicted get to do what they think is best and not only do they get to do what they think is best for themselves they get to force everybody else to do what they think is best too utilitarianism then necessarily means eventually some strong armed dictator like Putin comes in and says alright well what's best for everybody is unity for the country and that means we're going to make illegal kind of political activism that challenges my legitimate authority over everything so what people don't seem to understand is that when they make an argument, they don't just argue the contentions they're making. They argue the framework they imply. So if you win an argument by saying, well, we should do this super bad idea because of these predicted impacts, then you not only win that argument, but you win the implicit argument that that's a good way to decide what to do things. It's definitely not in general. I mean, I'm not an ideologue. There are going to be occasional exceptions where you need to look at, I guess, uh, heuristics of prediction to anticipate things successfully enough to justify taking the action. There's definitely going to be the exception for public policy because at the end of the day, no individual human amongst us is so smart and so right and so able to predict the future that they ought to be empowered to force their ideas on everybody else. The idea of sovereignty is one that gets a lot of misuse, I think. But the reality is simply this. By and large, if you're an American or Western Europe, you enjoy actual sovereignty. You can make your own decisions and you are responsible for and in charge of your own life. You can go where you want, do what you want, you can get a job, you can quit that job, you can get a different job. Um, and, and that's made possible by one thing and one thing only. A general belief or affirmation of some elements of a rights-based framework. Without that, we are all subject to immediate autocratic conquering. And that's exactly what happens. People who don't respect the process, the legitimacy of the process of coming up with advocacies, for example, or substantiated advocacy, who don't respect the limits of the human mind to know what's best for every other human being, then you get enough of those people and the wrong positions and yada yada and all of a sudden your free society shit 
and things get tighter and tougher and harder and and less prosperous injustice goes unpunished it's I mean they used to say America was a shiny city on the hill and some president said that I don't remember which one but we're definitely not anymore um, I think at one time it was true we made the right decisions as a country for a while because they were the right decisions not for any other reason and that's the only way to make public policy if it's not if it doesn't represent everybody's universal understandings then it's not really represented and there are very few things that we all agree on but we all do agree that unjust violence is unjust we may not agree on exactly what constitutes injustice but if I ask any individual if it will be okay for me to do blah to them they're going to say no and then if I say well what if I have a, a badge from a government is it okay and then they're going to say yeah and there's no reason to draw a distinction there because they haven't ascribed to law a correlation to justice that serves to substantiate the idea that we ought ought always prioritize legality as a metric of legitimacy. So it's legal for the government to do a variety of things. In other words, they, there's no mechanism. What it means to say that it's legal is there's no legal mechanism of accountability. That's all it means. If, if now look. Well, what if we were to legalize all drugs? Well, then there'd be no legal method for anybody to hold anybody accountable for doing drugs. Oh, well, that would be terrible. Like, no, that would be an excellent thing because that's not the sort of thing people need to be held accountable for. They're not violating anybody's rights. There's no transgression. So, um, what people do need to be held accountable for is transgression. We see it in our police forces what happens when there's a lack of accountability when there's no legal consequences for murder what do they do they murder people and get away with it I mean look at the fucking police unions what they say every time the cops murder somebody They're, they never I ever hear anything from police unions that suggests there's any possibility that the police could ever actually be guilty no matter how obviously ridiculous the shooting was why? Well, because they know that they're winning the arguments, so they keep making them. They're winning the arguments in court, where it matters. They're winning the arguments in public opinion, sort of. But um, regardless, they're obfuscating. They're saying, let's stop thinking about the, the real problem, which is the fact that cops are treated differently under the law than other people. And let's instead behave as though the problem were... Um, were to be determined, the, the question of, of whether or not it is a problem ought to be determined on, on the way the courts actually deal with it in real life, which is insane because they're obviously fucking it up royally. And not just the courts, it's juries too. Certain communities have, have uh, juries that just won't convict cops. Um, it's prosecutors, of course, who don't want to prosecute cops. And there's all sorts of problems associated with that. But the point being, why does that happen? Well, because we're treating some people differently than others under the law. We're not respecting people's natural rights over the presumed efficacy of empowering law enforcement. We're saying, oh, well, we can't take these tools away from law enforcement. You're not taking tools away from law enforcement. You're taking the tools away from some dude who just murdered somebody and is gonna get away with it. Law enforcement is not an individual they don't, it doesn't use tools. Cops do. Individual cops do. And individual cops are individual people like you and me. And they can do fucked up shit. They don't necessarily have to be good guys. They're not necessarily fighting on our behalf at all. Some of them might be. That's why we treat them like individual human beings. Not like a special breed of banana or something. So utilitarianism is the greatest wickedness the world has ever known. It is the justification of advocacies 
by pointing to predicted impacts. I, I want to stress, when you're using it as an ethical justification, it's the greatest wickedness in the world. When you use utilitarianism as a justification for your personal behavior, it's like, oh, I want to go to the, the subway and get a sandwich. Well, why? Because I'm hungry. And I believe that when I eat, I will have the impact of being full. Well, okay, fine. Yeah, that's perfectly reasonable. Because you're not saying you should force everybody to go to Subway. It's not about a policy that other people are going to be affected by. When you are talking about public policy, you're talking about... Don't worry, it's just tobacco. Um, you're talking about... Uh, going to affect 400 million people. And to just ignore the fact that there's already a law that says what they can do and what they can't do, or just accept the fact that judges can interpret the plain meaning and language of the Constitution to mean something obviously not indicated by the plain meaning of the words, it's, it's intolerable. That's not... The judicial branch needs to fucking step up its fucking game. Its job is not to allow certain things under a calculus of competing interests, which is a justification for a lot of these court rulings. The Constitution doesn't care about competing interests. It's not there to say, here's how the federal government should make the country better. It's there to say, here are the jobs of the federal government and nothing else because it's a government of the states, not of the people. The federal government is constrained by not just its enumerated powers, but also by the Bill of Rights, which double constrains them in some areas. I mean, in every area that it constrains. Congress shall make no law regarding religion or freedom of the press or whatever. Note how the First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law. That's how the Constitution works. It says, basically, what the federal government 